So I left you in the last video with this idea to ponder. Is f composite g at x the same as g composite f at x? And the answer is a big fat no. Even though it seems like it might be this true, you know, the order is just reversed. We know like for multiplying, the order doesn't matter. So 2 times 3 is the same as 3 times 2. But the composite function, the order totally does matter. If you're taking one function and plugging it into the other, your depending on which one you start with and what you plug it into is going to make a big difference. So, and we've actually did this. If you look back two slides here, this right here is f composite g. So you start with a g function, you plug it into the f, and you get this. On the very next page, we did the exact opposite. We took the f function and plugged it into the g function. You got something totally different. And even if you look at those first few steps, the first step in this one was to take that f function and plug it in here, and you multiply it by 3. In the first one, you took the g function, and your first step was to square it. So, of course, you're going to end up with, you started with different things, and you, your operations are different. So, of course, you're going to end up with different uh, aspects. So, the f composite g is not the same as g composite f. So, the important thing to note is the order in which you do the composites is extremely important. You have to work from the inside out. Okay? All right. So now an interesting um, way that we can look at this is if we take composite of uh, linear and trig functions. So in the last three days, we've been adding and multiplying um, trig functions and linear functions and all that sort of stuff. But what happens when you take one and put it inside of the other? And this is an interesting question and one that you'll be asked to do on your assignment. So we're going to look at these two functions. And we've got a trig function, cos x. And we've got a linear function, 2x plus 4. So what happens when we take f composite g of x? So this is like taking that linear function and plugging it in to the trig function. So... The g function is this linear, 2x plus 4. And I'm going to take it and plug it into the trig function. So instead of the cos of x, it's the cos of 2x minus 4. So what would that look like? What if we actually looked at graphing this? So we're going to investigate this cos function a little bit um, are detailed. For starters, if you remember, we don't like to take the cos of a number with a, uh, or the cos of a function with a number in front of that x, so we like to pull that out. We'd rather see it written like this. So this is the cos of 2 bracket x plus 2. And the reason it's x plus 2 is I pulled that 2 out of the function, so I've got to pull it out of both. You can do a quick little rainbow back to make sure you get the same thing. This is how we like to see cosine functions. With your k value out front here, and then your shift in the brackets. So this is a cosine function that has been shifted to the... Which direction is that? If it's x plus 2. Left. That's right. So this has moved left 2. And this 2 inside changes... What about cos functions? A period, that's right. And it's opposite to what you think. So remember the 2, you think it might stretch the period, but it does the opposite, it shrinks it. So it makes the period half as big. So the period is half the size. Okay. So um, our goal now is to graph this new function, a composite of a linear and a uh, trig function. So we know the period is going to be half the size. It's going to move left two radians, and we'll deal with that in a moment. Uh, the amplitude hasn't changed, though. There's no number out front, or at least it's a 1. So the amplitude is still going to be a 1. And uh, it, there's no vertical translation because there's no plus 2 or plus 3 or anything at the end. So all we know is the amplitude is going to be 1, period is going to be half the size, so the period will be pi, and it'll move left 2 radians, and that'll be the tricky part. 
So I'm going to pick a scale here that's easy enough to graph. I think I'll go by um, quarters, I guess. Uh, one, two, three, four, there's pi. One, two, three, four, there's two pi. And uh, I am moving up two, but I should have lots of room if I go like one, two, three, and negative one, negative two, negative three. So I'm going to lightly sketch the original cosine function. Cosine function starts at zero, or starts at one, ends at one down at negative 1, and then halfway between it's at 0, and halfway there it's at 0, and I'll lightly sketch that. Okay, so now I've got to take that one and I've got to change the period and the amplitude. Now the amplitude's 1, so it'll stay the same, but I will change the period. So let's do that. Start at 1, and instead of ending at 2 pi, it's now going to end at pi. Halfway between those two, it'll be at its lowest point. Halfway between the first and the middle, it'll be at 0. Halfway between the middle and last, it'll be at 0. And there is one with a new period of pi. And again, I'll lightly sketch that. And now, what we need to do is only get to move that left. We don't need to move it up or down. Now, the really odd part about this is this is in radians. Okay? So I have to move it left to radians. Not two ticks, two radians. The hard part is trying to figure out where two radians is. So let's look at this scale here. Right here... This is pi radians, right? I know it equals 180 degrees, but it's pi radians. And it's pi, it's actually 3.14 radians. So 2 radians is going to be something less than 3.14 radians. Okay, it's going to be somewhere around here. It's going to be, you know, part of the way to pi. Because 2 is part of the way to 3.14. The question is exactly where is it? Well, I'm going to do a little ratio to help me figure this out. So 3.14 is, according to my scale, 4 ticks. Right? You see that that's 4 ticks on the thing? So this is radian by ticks. I have to figure out how many ticks 2 radians are. So, a little bit of algebra here, and instead of question mark, I'll make that an x. And you go 3.14x equals 8. 8 divided by 3.14. And what do you get when you get 8 divided by 3.14? 2.547 ticks. So what we figured out then is a movement of left two radians ends up being about 2.5 ticks on our scale. So if we go back to our graph here, we're going to take that blue graph and move it left 2.5-ish ticks. So there's one, two, and a half ticks. So it's going to start about there. This one, one, two and a half, end about there. One, two and a half, be about there. The zero will be one, two and a half one, two and a half, and you end up with this as our final answer. Okay, so that's probably the more difficult version of this uh, composite. This other one is you're going to find is going to be much easier when we take the uh, trig function and put it inside the linear function. So this one is g at f at x and the f at x is cosine. So you're going to take the cosine and plug it into the linear function. So it becomes 2 cos x plus 4. And this one is actually going to be a lot easier to graph, isn't it? There's no phase shift. There's no um, period change. 
this is just the cosine function that is multiplied by 2 and then added 4. So the amplitude is 2 and it's moved up 4. And I think I'll leave it with you to finish this, but here's what the picture looks like. And so there is the final graph of the cosine function with a new amplitude of 2 and shifted up 4. And that's a much easier one. So here's a couple of questions to practice. Um, really, it's uh, like question example one where you're doing a couple of composites and then somewhere you're going to doing a little bit of sketching. Uh, it's about one or two small questions on your assignments, so it would be good to just do a little bit of this practice um, before you get to your assignment. So good luck. Bye.